Hello everyone and thanks once again for joining us for this uh, Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on the 18th day of July 2022. I'm David Percy. Up uh, first, uh, peak wind gusts uh, here, pretty strong winds or a strong storm system just north of the Bering Strait coast there and in the southeastern Chukchi Sea uh, brought some pretty good winds gusting 40 to 55 miles per hour. Shishmaref and uh, over at Deering, both reporting peak wind gusts 53 miles per hour today. Nome, just under 50 miles an hour, they're 48 miles an hour. And then the 56 mile an hour wind gusts there in the Seward Peninsula, that place called Hoodoo Hill, about 1500 foot in elevation. Otherwise, Kivalina, peak wind 46 miles an hour, 30 to 35 miles an hour, Kotzebue and into the Selawick Valley there. So pretty windy day from St. Lawrence Island right up to the northwest coast. And along the northwest uh, northwestern coast there of the state and that's resulted those windy conditions with that strong low pressure center have resulted in high surf advisories uh, for the St. Lawrence Island area the Bering Strait coast uh, the North Shishmaref area also Norton Sound all the coastal areas around Norton Sound there, including the Yukon Delta coast and the northwest coast there Kotzebue right on up to uh, Point Hope and that's out for tonight into uh, early Tuesday and by midday Tuesday those uh, advisories should end but up until that time look for possible minor beach erosion due to the uh, heavy surf and from there looking at fire danger a lot of blue across uh, just about all of the state panhandle the only exception being some high fire danger there on the western uh, north western north slope on out to the western Arctic coast Otherwise, uh, not much to look at here, and this uh, isn't expected to change much over the next few days with continuous rainfall coming in daily into uh, the west coast and spreading across the state. Satellite imagery showing uh, that pattern going on. Had one uh, system move through, got some clearing there over Cook Inlet this afternoon, Kodiak Island, up into the Manuska Sasitna Valley, and then some uh, variable, partly sunny skies there over the eastern interior and also uh, northern Cusquam Valley. Low pressure spinning there just north of the Bering Strait that produces strong winds and uh, wet conditions there. St. Lawrence Island across the Seward Peninsula as we saw into Norton Sound and up along the northwest coast and a wet day over the Panhandle and North Gulf Coast with uh, about two-thirds of an inch precipitation falling uh, or a give or take there across the entire southeast coast today and uh, that moving through starting to become a little more showery along the coast with some clearing just off the coast and clearing getting close to uh, Yakutat as well. Alaska Peninsula not too bad some sunshine there uh, Sand Point and again that up into Kodiak Island generally cloudy with a uh, few sun breaks there across the Aleutians exception being Shimia there on the uh, right under that next frontal boundary that extends up to a wave there just west of the Perbilof Islands and that extends right on into the Cusquam Delta coast and the southwest interior. As you can see on the infrared imagery here you can see a developing system just north of the Perbilof Islands there. Uh, warm frontal type uh, rainfall reaching the southwest coast. The main low center, the strong low center up there just north of the Bering Strait with the gusty winds and rain up in that area and more showery conditions over the central and eastern interior as that uh, band of moisture starts to fall apart over the, uh, the Nana area, Fairbanks, and extending down to the central Alaska range areas. And putting this into motion again, a uh, system just south of the Aleutians spreading some mid and high level clouds and maybe a few showers in toward the Fox Islands. Otherwise, not too bad down in that area and even better over the Alaska Peninsula. On the chart today, uh, again, westerly flow coming in, becoming a little more northwesterly over the Bering Sea, turning west and carrying surges of moisture and clouds in over mainland Alaska over the last 24 hours. And uh, again, that trough right into the panhandle, making for a wet uh, overnight period and 
through much of the day today, starting to become a little more showery and starting to taper off along the coastline there. Again, with that clearing area showing up just off the coast. And for tonight, uh, it'll become more showery. The showers will linger the entire night over the panhandle, drying out, say, around Yakutat. And then that next front pushing a little pressure coming into the Seward Peninsula there. Winds will start to diminish, turn more northerly. And, uh, but definitely lighter winds, although still pretty gusty west winds expected for the Yukon Delta and Norton Sound turning southwest. Probably could see possible gusts of 40 miles an hour there in the lower Kobuk and uh, Kobuk Valley areas with uh, moderate amounts of rain pushing into the Cuscomb Valley central interior late tonight to the western or the eastern Alaska range or western Alaska range tonight and then eventually into south central Alaska. Some more rain coming in overnight tonight. Uh, or the, possibly as early as this evening back into Cook Inlet and increasing chances of rain for Kodiak Island as well. And for tomorrow, that uh, front washes out into a trough and kind of stalls out, so it looks cloudy and wet for much of uh, south central Alaska from Bristol Bay right up into the uh, eastern interior areas. And then between that trough and the warm front coming in with more rain into the southwest uh, Yukon Delta, there will be a little break uh, between those two systems, kind of just uh, scattered showers there, Cuscombe Valley on up into the uh, upper Yukon uh, Flats area and around the southern Koyukuk Valley. Showers will be more numerous over the northern Panhandle and possibly a dry day down toward Dixon entrance with periods of light rain and fog all of the north Gulf Coast. Occasional light rain for Kodiak Island. And pretty gusty winds coming across the northern Bering Sea again. Uh, westerlies there with that 995 millibar low tracking just north of St. Matthew Island. And the outlook for Wednesday, that low continues eastward but weakens. So winds uh, won't be much of a factor by Wednesday afternoon there over the Bering Sea. But a widespread area of moderate, possibly briefly heavy rainfall. Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula right on up into south central Alaska, Susitna Valley, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula. Look for another good shot of rain, just uh, good solid rain coming into the southwest interior. Areas of rain extending northward all the way up to the northwest coast in Otak Valley and the southern slopes of the Brooks Range becoming a little more showery as you head east there. It looks like the north slope and Arctic coast will be mostly dry, just a risk of a shower and also uh, maybe a few sun breaks up there again like you saw today. And uh, Panhandle, periods of rain, that uh, weak system off the south coast will spread a chance of rain across uh, about the entire southeast coast, a little more in the way of showery conditions, numerous showers for the north Gulf Coast, but looks cloudy, cool, and wet over much of interior Alaska south of the Brooks Range, and the exception being the central and western Aleutians should be dry. Lows for tonight. Uh, Mid to upper 30s to near 40 for the Arctic Coast North Slope, otherwise 40s to lower 50s in the Tanana Valley. Western Interior more in the 40 to 45 degree range and uh, mid 40s for the uh, Bering Sea. Mid to upper 40s for the Aleutians, the Alaska Peninsula, lower 50s Kodiak Island, lower 50s Kenai Peninsula into the Manuska Susitna Valley, upper 40s Copper River Basin, 50 to 55 for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, upper 50s to lower 60s for the Southeast Coast upper 50s to uh, lower 60s around the Fairbanks area but look at the upper 60s still nobody reaching 70 yet for the Northway area Eagle might reach 67 65 for Fort Yukon and that means Chuck Yitzik might try to push 70 but probably won't make it 40s on the Arctic coast otherwise everywhere else in the 50s and for the lows on Wednesday morning Back into the mid to upper 30s for the Arctic coast, uh, mostly in the upper 30s to lower 40s for the North Slope into the Brooks Range. And in the 40s over much of interior Alaska, uh, maybe some lower 50s uh, for South Central Alaska, more so for the Panhandle and Kodiak Island, but uh, kind of a cool morning coming up Wednesday morning across all the state, although that's a pretty normal overnight low pattern for the Aleutians in the Bering Sea. And then highs on Wednesday afternoon, edging up close to 70 for the Yukon Flats there, but still stuck in the 60s in the greater Fairbanks area eastward to the border. Upper 50s to lower 60s for the southeast coast and 50s to near 60 south central Alaska, Copper River Basin, Kodiak Island, lower to mid 50s for Bristol Bay and the Yukon Cuscombe Delta and in the 50s over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, upper 40s for St. Lawrence Island to the western Seward Peninsula. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
IFR Central Eastern Arctic Coast, VFR for the North Slope, Central Eastern Brooks Range, VFR, and the Eastern Interior, uh, VFR, and down into the Cuscoom Valley, uh, Cuscoom Mountains actually, VFR, and then lots of uh, IFR in across Southern Alaska, North Gulf Coast into the Panhandle, and Southern Kodiak Island. A pretty good IFR zone there over the central and southern Bering Sea, Nunavak Island, Pribilofs, down to the uh, Aleutians, with Marzo VFR and IFR along the west coast and into the Bering Straits. And for the afternoon, solid IFR out over the Bering Sea down to Atka Island, and then marginal VFR, eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, Nunavak Island, Kuskokwim Togiak Bay areas, and into Bristol Bay and the Aleutian Range. Marginal VFR, Kodiak Island, on up across all of South Central Alaska, and that marginal VFR zone extends up into the Tanana Valley, all the way up to just about the southern slopes of the Eastern Brooks Range, and the 40 Mile Country into the Copper River Basin, some VFR tomorrow afternoon, IFR North Gulf Coast from, say, Portage eastward into Yakutat, marginal VFR for the Panhandle, IFR along the south coast, <clears throat> and for Wednesday morning, IFR, Central Eastern Arctic Coast, into the Eastern North Slope, and uh, some VFR in the Central Northeast Interior, otherwise really widespread IFR now, Kotzebue Sound, Selawik, Seward Peninsula, Norton Sound, Southwest Interior, right on down across uh, the Bering Sea, ADAC westward, and then marginal VFR for Atka Island, and uh, Eastern Aleutians kind of marginal to IFR conditions there into the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, VFR, and uh, Seldovia, Port Moeller, Homer, looks uh, pretty good. Maybe even Anchor Point, VFR to start. Otherwise, IFR, Panhandle, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, and the western Susit northern Susitna Valley. And then for Wednesday afternoon, kind of IFR stretched out uh, across the state from northeast, northwest to southeast, and then that on down into Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula, Manuska Valley, northern Susitna Valley, down across the uh, Kenai Peninsula, and then southwestward across the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians, Pervilofs, and western Aleutians, all IFR, and then some scattered areas of marginal VFR over the northern Bering Sea, but mostly VFR southwest interior, as well as the North Slope and Arctic coast, marginal for the Panhandle. Passes, Anatuvik, go VFR tomorrow, and uh, VFR at times also for Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill, mostly marginal conditions, either approach uh, for the day on Tuesday, and rainy, mostly marginal. Windy, look for uh, occasional marginal VFR, both north and south entrances, and through the pass, Isabel, same forecast, marginal VFR at times on Tuesday. Mintasta, though, should be looking at a pretty much VFR kind of day there, and Tanita, IFR, Portage, IFR as well, and then back to marginal VFR for Chilkoot and White. Looking at the freezing levels, cold pool aloft with that uh, deep upper level low, Arctic low there, over the uh, Bering Strait and Chukchi Sea and Northwest Interior, and then much warmer conditions. You head south 10 to 12,000 feet over the Southern Bering Sea in the Alaska Peninsula, and running about 8 to 12,000 feet there across the Panhandle. Icing with all the moisture coming in, it looks like uh, isolated moderate rime or mixed icing Northern Cook Inlet, across much of interior Alaska, all the way to the Arctic coast, and westward over the northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, Nunavak Island. And from there, moving on to uh, the jet stream. There's that deep upper low I spoke of there, just uh, north of Shishmaref, southwest of Kivalina, and good northwest jet now instead of westerly, kind of northwest, up to 125 knots, but uh, drops off down along the Alaska Peninsula, takes a turn to the east, and then southwest 75 to 90 knots over southern Alaska. And at 9,000 feet, uh, more westerly at this elevation, 45 to 50 knots across the northern Bering Sea, turn west-southwest 40 to 45 knots in over the interior, breakaway low over southern Cook Inlet, westerly flow over Kodiak Island, and west-southwest flow, Copper River Basin, the Panhandle, 3,000 feet, uh, 40 to 50 knot westerlies over the Bering Sea, carrying those systems uh, fairly rapidly from west to east into the interiors with pushing those surges of moisture. Looking at turbulence, uh, considerable moderate chop, Kenai Peninsula, Copper River Basin, and the western interior.
Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining us again, talking about the augmented reality sandbox, is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. And he's actually talking about a project from EPSCOR, which is the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. A lot of acronyms, but some really mm -hmm. fun stuff today, right, Eric? You bet. We've got a learning tool that is a tool that's fun to use, uh -huh. and it really has a, a relevance to actually daily lives of anyone who goes outside uh -huh. and sees uh, lumpy topography in Alaska. We've got yes. a lot of mountains and such. You know, when I was younger and go on your first hike in the hills, say, yeah. you're given, maybe you're in the Boy Scouts, or, or you get at the kiosk at, a, at the trailhead, a topographic map, a flat piece of paper yes. with all these lines on it, bullseyes, uh, long lines that curve back mm -hmm. on themselves, say, perhaps things that look like this. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a quadrangle or a topographic map. We've got here just to, to illustrate a couple of examples near Denali. Alaska okay. has so much Perfect topography, example. so many mountains. Yeah. And what are all these lines that we see? It can be tough mm -hmm. to know what this means the oh, first yeah. time you look at it. What we've got, all these lines represent lines of where the, uh, the elevation of the topography goes through a certain level above sea level, say, mm -hmm. that this line represents where the mountains have gone from below 1,000 feet mean sea level up through 1,000 feet and above. That's your 1,000 foot contour. And when the mountain keeps going up, mm -hmm. you're up to 1,200 feet, 1,400 feet, and so on. And that's how you get this little bullseye around, around the peak of a mountain. It kind of makes layered slices, right? Kind of like layered slices. Okay. Nice way yeah. to look yeah. at that. And when you see those, the lines are closer together, you're, you're going up more steeply. Okay. If the mountain rises more slowly, it takes you longer in horizontal space to go through those different vertical increments. So that is that, really hard to visualize. Right. We're, Imagine you're looking at a 2D piece of paper, two-dimensional yeah. piece of paper, but you're trying to understand what it, the three-dimensional world looks yeah. like. Yeah. Well, enter Neil, the augmented I'll... reality I like sandbox. It. Okay. Yes, what is that? Yeah. It is right here. We have the sandbox with us today, Sandbox 2.0, portable version. Sweet. Built up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. And we've got a couple of folks helping out today. Yeah, uh, let's see, Alana Velaji, and she's a uh, mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. If you want to give us a thumbs up there, Alana, thanks for helping us out today. And Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator from EPSCOR, also helping us out today. Thanks, Courtney. And this tool here has a Microsoft Connect um, to sense the level of sand in this sandbox. Oh, wow. And then okay. the Connect feeds its information into a computer that then sends a signal to a projector okay. to draw the appropriate topographic lines on this topography. The fun thing about this, as we can see here, wow, is that the sandbox and its Connect and its projector, they all work as a team. Hmm. So here we've got a mountain in the middle of the, of the uh, sandbox. What if we uh, took down the mountain to some degree Watch as the, uh, the software responds and redraws the topography. Mm, kind of a caldera forming there. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's fun about the sandbox too is it knows that uh, gravity flows downhill okay. and we've got some water that's actually down in the lowest elevations. And what's happening now is we're making it rain a little bit. We'll fill up rain oh, into wow. that uh, elevated lake bed, that caldera, as you uh -huh. said. And so now water is pooled up there. And if what if you gouged out an outlet uh -oh. channel? Glacial dam release. There you go. The water flows out. What we're seeing here is a tool mm. that allows people to touch and connect uh, Microsoft Connect, right. RRR, yeah. um, to connect two-dimensional topographic maps like what we have here, these flat things on a piece, wow. on a piece of paper, to the real three-dimensional world. I mm -hmm. think this sandbox, it's sandbox's real particular application as a learning tool to young people is what does a two-dimensional map mean when it's trying to represent the three-dimensional world? Right. This sandbox is kind of both at once. It's actually three-dimensional, uh -huh. a lumpy topography there, the sand, but it's got these lines drawn on the three-dimensional sand that would be on a two-dimensional right, piece right. of paper. Wow, that, I mean, that, that is a huge leap from the learning that we experienced when we were younger to how, mm -hmm. how children and even adults are visualizing in, in these new forms of technology it allows that to kind of reshape their thinking and visualize this in a, in a very useful and absolutely hands-on way. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a hands-on tool. And it's hard for me to sit here and not go play with that. <laughs> well, that's what happened at GINA, um, up at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, when the first model was being made, the prototype with right. plywood and such, we had professional adult 
<laughs> professor types had heard about this and they yeah. came by because they wanted to see how it worked. Okay. And, and everyone becomes uh, that idealistic, wonder-filled youngster. Sure. And, and you, you just can't help but play with that and to see how it reacts in time and, and um, right. it, it's a dynamic learning tool. And it Dynamic. responds. That's exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. And you know, you wonder okay. what applicabilities beyond a teaching right. tool for Where topography it can it have? You can see how in Alaska we have inundation mapping is an okay. issue. If you had water coastal slosh, mm -hmm. slosh inland, say in a coastal flooding event right. on the western coast of Alaska or mm -hmm. the Arctic coast, you could see this. The concept is illustrated here um, as an introductory learning method. I think this is a potentially good outreach tool for all of us in Alaska. Okay, so not only just a topographical sense, a, a mapping sense, maybe something that leads into understanding of how geographic information systems work with GIS, but mm -hmm. also geology, if we wanted to get into kind of the formations and the bigger land masses and, and the representation of the 2D map, uh, we could go into hydrology, uh, which is uh, very important in Alaska, of course. Um, and even just understanding the weather sense, mounding up a big pile of sand could be that Arctic high pressure system sitting on top of Fairbanks and the voids mm -hmm. would be low pressure systems. This can go a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. exactly. It's uh, not just landforms, but pressure has contours of high pressure and low pressure. And I wish I had had this kind of a learning tool no when I was taking kidding. Meteorology 101 back 25 years oh, ago. Wow. Would have been helpful, I think. Probably would have gotten a better grade, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming by, Eric and Alana and Courtney. Thank you so much for your help there in the sandbox. We are going to play in the sandbox a little bit more coming up tomorrow on our next edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We hope you join us for that. In the meantime, make sure you go to alaska.edu slash E-P-S-C-O-R. That's alaska.edu. EPSCOR to learn more information about what we're doing with this augmented reality sandbox around Alaska. We'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Moving on to the coastal water forecast. Not bad wind-wise there for the coastal areas of the southeast coast. Mostly southwest, 10 knots with 6 to 7 foot seas for the central and south coast. North coast, south winds 10 to 15 knots. Southern inside water is Clarence Strait looking at a southwest breeze at 10 knots tomorrow. South of 10 for Stevens Passage. And south winds 20 knots for Lynn Canal. And for the day on Wednesday, wind shaping up like this. Uh, a little breezier out along the coast. North coast, south winds 20 knots, sea 7 feet. South coast, south winds 15 knots. Central northern inside waters, south winds of 15 knots. And for Clarence Strait, look, looking at continued light wind conditions from the southeast at 10 knots. Prince William Sound, south winds 20 knots Tuesday with 3 foot seas. And for the North Gulf Coast, winds will be out of the southwest at 15 to 20 knots with 7 foot seas. About the same for the Barren Islands, southwest winds at 20 knots. And for Kamishak Bay, southwest winds 15 knots with three foot seas. But small craft advisories for Cook Inlet, uh, looking at south to southwest winds 25 to as high as 30 knots, especially north of the Forelands with seven foot seas. Small craft advisories continue into Wednesday for Cook Inlet for south winds sustained at 25 knots and eight foot seas. Kamishak Bay, lighter winds from the south at 15 knots in the Barren Islands, south winds 15 knots. North Gulf Coast, south to southwest breeze of 15 knots with 5 foot seas. And Prince William Sound, light southeast winds 10 knots. Kodiak Island, winds will be southwest 20 to 25 knots with seas at 7 feet. Bristol Bay, west winds 20 knots. Alaska Peninsula, west and northwest winds 15 to 20 knots, seas around 6 feet. And for Wednesday, Kodiak Island, southwest winds 20 knots, seas 7 feet. Small craft advisories now from Sitkanak to Cape Sarachev, southwest winds 25 knots with 8 foot seas. Small craft advisories from Cape Sarachev on the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula all the way up across Bristol Bay for 30 knot winds from the southwest and seas just under 10 feet. Eastern Aleutians, west winds 15 to 20 knots. Central Aleutians, southwest winds 20 knots. And for the western Aleutians, west-southwest winds 20 knots, seas around 6 feet. And for Wednesday, western Aleutians, small craft advisories, west winds 20 to 25 knots. Same thing for the uh, central Aleutians, west-southwest winds 20 to 25 knots. Small craft advisories for the eastern Aleutians, west-southwest winds 20 to 30 knots with 7 to 9 foot seas. And for the southwest coast, 
for the for the Yukon Delta Coast, uh, small craft advisories, southwest winds 25 knots, 7 foot sea, small craft advisories for Norton Sound for west winds of 30 knots, west 25 for St. Lawrence Island, southwest 30 for the St. Matthew Island area, winds lighten up as you head south, Pribilof's looking at a southwest breeze at 20 knots with 5 foot seas. And for the day on Wednesday, small craft advisories for the Pribilofs, northwest winds 25 knots with 10 foot seas. Gale warnings out for the Cusquam Delta Coast. West winds sustain 35 knots, seas 11 feet. North winds 30 knots for St. Lawrence Island, turning northwest at 25 for the southwest coast. And northwest 25 knot winds also for the northern Bering Sea and St. Matthew Island. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast for Tuesday, west winds 10 to 15 knots. Northwest at 10 knots for the central coast. Northeast winds 20 knots for the western Arctic coast all the way down to Wales. And from uh, or for Wednesday, variable winds at 10 knots for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, turning east at about 10 on the central coast. Northeast 15 knots for the western Arctic coast. And uh, 20 knot winds from Cape Beaufort all the way down to Wales from the north and northeast. For tonight, uh, low pressure moves in over the Seward Peninsula, so winds will diminish in that area up there, but stay breezy over the Yukon Delta Coast, Norton Sound, as well as the Kobuk Valley, with uh, periods of moderate rain along in advance of the front, pushing eastward across the Kuskokwim Valley this evening into the Alaska Range toward midnight, and then pushing into the South Central Alaska area, Bristol Bay, into the Central Interior toward morning. Otherwise, rain changes to showers uh, for the Panhandle. And for tomorrow, another system enters the northern Bering Sea, moving eastward, bringing another round of moderate rain into the Yukon Delta. And rain will cover much of southern Alaska at times. More showery conditions up over the central and northeast interior with periods of rain with a trough over the north slope. Showery for the panhandle, heaviest in the north. And for Wednesday, wet and cool over much of the state. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>